There's going to be a lot said about Constantine today, as he very well deserves. Uh, my privilege and what I was asked to share is to focus on the gospel that he carried in his life. And knowing Constantine and his heart, and I believe the heart of every believer here, I think we all want to be the believers that when we pass, whatever the circumstances may be, people cannot help talk about you when they talk about you, but to mention the gospel that you lived, to mention the Savior that you life. It was so central to your identity that even as you leave, that is what's left behind and so I, I will share that today. Um, excuse me. Yesterday I had a chance to visit Pastor Igor, Svetlana, his wife, the family, um, to grieve together, to reminisce a little bit, to hear the stories. And I felt like I visited the, the house of Job. Um, and, and those were the words that you shared with me. I felt... In our interaction, the heart of every father in Scripture that had ever lost a son. As I was driving back, I, I, I thought about Adam when he heard the news of Abel murdered. I thought about uh, Jacob when the news was delivered to him that his son, Joseph, had been torn apart by wild animals. He was no more. They couldn't find the body even. Just the clothes. He was dead. And then I thought about David, who had lost so many sons, but hearing the news of Absalom and, and that cry, my son, my son, Absalom, the pain of a father's heart. Thank you for sharing that with me. And I... Pastor Igor shared those words from Job that I want to make central to this conversation. In Job 1.21, having lost his sons, he said, the Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Pastor Igor shared, he says, I repeat those words to myself. It is easy to say God gave, the Lord gave, because truly it was such a blessing to all of us. God gave us this time with Constantine, gave us, blessed us through him in so many ways. It was easy to say that, but to say, to say God took away, God took, was much harder. He said, I had to say it so many times to convince myself, almost yell it, to, to try to make it, give it some substance. Could it be that? This is going to be tough to share, but, but I think it provides context for the loss when you were sharing, Pastor, with a story of how you found out when they went to look for uh, Constantine. He hadn't returned home, and they went driving down that road to his usual prayer spot and drive up to a police cordon. They have blocked off the road, and it was a narrow road. They couldn't just get around it, so Pastor Igor gets out and says to the cop, hey, can we get around? Um, obviously, there's no easy detours, and the guy says, no, you can't. So he says, well, we're looking for my son. This is kind of important. Is there any way we can s sneak around you guys? And they, and they say, well, what's your son's name? He says, it's Constantine, Constantine Dronov. And when they, the cop says, well, sir, you no longer have a son. <laughs> to hear that news, and in that moment, how do you say God takes away? Because in that moment you think, no, God is good. God gives. God provides. He gives life. Satan takes away. The devil takes away. He's the destroyer. He's the one that wants death. Him, you want to shake your fist at Satan and say, you did this. But, but how is it God that takes away? It makes it harder to recognize that the God that loves, 
the God that desires nothing but good for us, he was the one that took away. How could he, as a father, do this to a father's heart? Why would you, Dad? Why would you? I was driving back, and it really, I think it was from the Lord, it hit me that specific verse as I was thinking about it and thinking about it. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, and, and this, this is the thought that struck me and that I wanted to share. I realized something about that verse was that God didn't only give us Constantine. I started thinking through the Bible about all the times it says God gave. God gave, John 3.16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. God gives. John 5.21, for just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so the Son also gives life. God gives life. John 6.32, my Father who gives you the true bread out of heaven, he gives, God gives his word. He gives, he gives peace. Peace I leave to you, my peace I give to you. He gives peace to the family now, he gives. God gives perseverance and encouragement. Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement, Paul says in Romans 15, 5, grant you to be the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus. God gives. God gives. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. God gives again. And finally, 1 Thessalonians 4, 8, God who gives us his Holy Spirit in you. As you look at this verse, we, we think God gave us Constantine, but you start to stack up that, the, the weight, what God gave us. He gives, and he gives, and he gives, and he gave Constantine, and he gave us his son, and victory, and peace, and encouragement, even in this moment. But there's a second part to that verse, God takes. And I started thinking about, what does scripture say about God takes? Here's what God takes. He himself took our illnesses and carried away our diseases. He takes. Luke 1.25, this is the way the Lord has dealt with me to take away my disgrace from the people. He takes disgrace. John 1.29, the next day he saw Jesus coming to him and said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God takes. He gives immeasurable gifts, and he takes everything also. He takes sin and illness, takes it upon himself. And in that equation, he can take things that we love, and love in a biblical way, and love in a God-honoring way, and he can take that too. And it will also be for his glory. And that's where we end up with this verse Blessed be the name of the Lord. Once the scales are balanced, it leaves us in a place where all we can say is to fall down in worship and say, God, we see the equation. We see what you've given. We've seen what you've taken. And the pain still hurts. You can't return Khan. But he gives peace. He gives victory. He gives his spirit. He gives his son. So many people react to these moments in, in, in different ways. We were listening to um, Ray Comfort interview somebody on the street, and this woman um, said, I lost a daughter when she was young, and I left God, and I left religion, um, and then I had another baby daughter, and I actually came back because I thought God reincarnated my daughter into this new girl. People can respond to tragedy by making up religions, by leaving the church, by running away from all the other gifts that God has given them. And I know today we run into the Father's embrace. Even as he takes Khan, we run into his embrace and say, blessed be your name. We worship him through the pain. We let him take, knowing it is for his glory. And then we bow before him honoring him for all that he's given, for all that he's taking, no matter how much it hurts. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can we all say that together? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen.